Good evening. We're back with more Marvel Champions, and this evening will be a card review of the Storm Hero Pack, Aurora Monroe. Liked Wolverine quite a lot. And Cyclops and Phoenix were fun. Not very strong, but we've gotten two S tier champions already with Wolverine and Shadow Cat, so continuing the trend from Sinister Motives from the Sinister Motive cycle where more S tier heroes are being added than was the case for like the Mad Titan Shadow cycle or the Galaxy's Most Wanted cycle. This is definitely welcome. So we've still really only got one hero in the game who can take on all the content solo reliably, and that is Spider-Ham. Let's take a look at Storm and see what we've got here. She's got three recovery, six hand size, ten hit points. She begins the game with a weather deck. Her setup, choose a support from the weather deck and put it into play. Okay. Well, we'll have to take a look at the weather deck. She has pretty weak stats, one port, two attack, one defense, standard hand, five hand size. Swap your weather support in play with a support of your choice from the weather deck. Resolve the special ability on your weather support in play. Okay, well, let's take a look at the weather deck. We have clear skies. Each character gains stalwart. Draw one card. Hurricane. Each character gains retaliate. Remove two threat. Thunderstorm, each character gets plus one attack, deal two damage to an enemy. Blizzard, each character gets minus one attack. Choose a non-elite minion until the end of the round. Treat that minion's text box as if it were blank. So these buffs, they don't say friendly character. Does that mean enemies get the buffs too? Yes, it does. Okay, so... Each turn you can get draw one card, remove two threat, deal two damage, or blank an enemy minion's text box with her ability. Draw one card is probably the best. Each character gains stalwart so you can wipe off stuns or confuses. So this would be each of these effects would be better in multiplayer because in multiplayer you don't add more bosses but you do add a lot more friendly characters so in solo you're giving a buff to like one let's say you had a clean board no allies no minions on the table in a solo game you're giving one friendly character stalwart that's your hero and one enemy character stalwart that's the enemy hero but in a four player game you would give four friendly characters stalwart and one enemy character stalwart. So these abilities get better the more players are in the game. Each character gains retaliate, attack, attack, okay. Uh, the special abilities are good with the card draw being the best one. We'll have to take a look at her other cards. So she's not going to generate an extra resource every round. She can do it every other round. Uh, okay. She's weak defensively. At first glance it appears that we're looking at a multiplayer focused hero with a lot of utility combo potential, a lot of decisions to make. Seems like a lot of fun in multiplayer. I don't know if we'll be looking at a strong solo hero. To get S tier with very weak stats like this, you really need to generate a lot of resources, like uh, Spider-Ham or Iron Man levels of resources, and we don't see that from Storm so far. Let's take a look at her cards. Storm's Crown. Two cost upgrade. Storm gets plus one thwart, so that brings her up to the standard two thwart. Exhaust Storm's crown. Generate, generate the printed resource on your weather support. Okay, so this, it's the standard resource generator that most heroes have. 
Storm's Cape, three cost upgrade. Storm gets plus one defense and gains aerial. That'll bring her up to the standard two defense. After you resolve the special ability on your weather support, exhaust Storm's Cape and ready Storm. Okay, so basically once per round. Maybe more if there are other ways to trigger specials. Once per round you can ready her. This is expensive for what it does. Typically a readying card would cost two, like Arc Reactor or Doctor Strange's Cape. This one costs three and I guess it's because you get plus one defense. But she starts out with less stats than you would normally get, so we don't really give this card credit for that. Say this is a little bit overcosted. Aurora's Garden. One cost support, exhaust Aurora's Garden. Heal two damage from your identity. That's fine. It's it's above average as far as alter ego supports go. Uh, we just don't play them much in solo because we don't want to be an alter ego that often. If ever. Weather Goddess, zero cost event, swap your weather support and play with a support of your choice from the weather deck. Resolve the special ability on your weather support in play. So this is worth the value of your average weather support plus whatever you value you assign to the utility of it, the versatility being able to swap in the right weather card for the right situation. Uh, generally the value of a weather support is two or one card draw. For zero cost that's fine. That is adequate. Uh, this will also allow you to ready if you have Storm's Cape out, in which case the value would be quite good. But the Cape is only one card in 40. This card's fine. Good with the cape, otherwise just fine. Torrential Rain. Remove three threat from among schemes in play, two cost event. If Hurricane is in play, resolve its special ability. What did Hurricane do? Hurricane was the remove two threat. So you can remove three threat and then two threat for two cost. Uh, nah, it's not that good. It's not that good. We just saw Wolverine get a two cost, three threat removal, and draw two cards. That's way better than this. Way, way better. Like, comparing two threat to drawing two cards is laughable. So, eh, this isn't that good. Get three of them. Lightning Bolt, 3 cost event, deal 8 damage to an enemy in play, if Thunderstorm is in play resolve it's special, Thunderstorm deals 2 damage, so 3 cost for 10 damage, now that is good, that's strong, I like it. So, meh threat reduction, but strong damage on this Lightning Bolt, for 3 cost, yeah. but only if Thunderstorm is in play. If it's not, it's acceptable. It's not bad. Even if Thunderstorm is not in play, it's, it's not bad. Torrential Rain is pretty bad if Hurricane isn't in play, and even with Hurricane, it's not that good. Flash Freeze, one cost event. When the villain attacks you, the villain and each minion engaged with you get minus three attack, minus three while attacking you this phase. If Blizzard is in play, resolve its special ability. So Blizzard blanks the text box of a minion. Uh, this is a good defensive card. I like it. It's needed. It's it's efficient. Very solid. Some solid events here, but uh, solid events are not what is needed to elevate Storm to a high tier for solo play. What's needed is uh, resource generation. Resource generation. So in solo, the only S tier heroes currently that I've seen are, they either generate a lot of resources, like Wolverine with his claws, like Spider-Ham with his defensive ability, or like Iron Man with his card draw. 
with his ability to go up to hand size 7. So all three of the resource generating heroes, they all have the resource generation built into their kit. Now Storm does have resource generation built into her kit, but it's only one card and it's only every other turn, which isn't that good. And then the other heroes that are S tier all have three defense. That would be like, um, or in the case of Shadowcat, she has two defense, but she has her phased form, which is built in that makes her a strong defender. So we have like, um, we have Captain America with his three defense with his shield. We have, well, Doctor Strange is the exception. So Doctor Strange is really strong but he's also a resource generator. He generates resources with Winds of Watum and with Eye of Agamotto and with Sorcerer Supreme. And that is stronger resource generation than Storm can do by quite a bit. And then Debatably Ant-Man, though, I, at this point I would consider him like an A, maybe A-plus tier hero. And the other S tier heroes are Ironheart, um, Spider-Man with the Web Warrior cards I think is pretty strong, but not as strong as Ghost Spider, Shadow Cat. So anyway, Storm doesn't have a way to match them defensively, and she doesn't have a way to match the resource generators. Uh, I do think she's a good multiplayer hero with her ability to like buff the entire party with these effects. But let's take a look at the rest of her cards and see if she gets elevated. So we just got Blast of Wind remaining, and that's it. 3 cost event, choose a player, deal 3 damage to the villain, and each minion engaged with that player. Resolve the special ability of your weather support. Okay, well the best one is draw 1 card, so if you could deal 3 damage to the villain and draw a card, all you really need is 1 minion on the table to get good value out of this. You, get, you would get good value for that. If you get 2 minions, that's exceptional value. It's good, it's not always exceptional, but it is exceptional pretty often as far as events go. But again, Storm is going to come up short of being S tier in solo play because she doesn't have strong defense and she doesn't have very strong resource generation. And that's what we're looking for from our top tier solo heroes, though she does have strong multiplayer potential with the ability to give every character these buffs which scales up the more players that you have. So let's take a look at her the aspect cards that come with her. Leadership cards we've got Havoc, 4 cost ally, 1 thwart to attack, 3 health. When Havoc attacks discard the top card of the encounter deck each boost icon discarded this way, Havoc gets plus one attack for this attack and takes one consequential damage. But he doesn't have consequential damage on his attack otherwise. Okay, well let's say that you had played him and you attacked for two and drew a boost card of two. took two consequential damage and then chump blocked. That would not be good. If you drew a boost of three and took three damage you would have paid four for an attack of five and then he dies. That's not good. A boost of one? Let's say you did that twice. Okay, we're talking now we're talking, if you could do, if you drew a boost of one for attacks two turns in a row, eh, at least it's better. You really need to draw a boost of zero at least once. You need to draw a boost of zero, then two boosts of one, 
And then you would be at the level of your average hero-specific ally, roughly. If you could do more than that, then he's good. This is a very RNG-focused hero, and I don't think the average RNG makes him very good. I think this hero is going to be pretty meh a lot of the time for it. Or not this hero, but this ally is going to be pretty meh a lot of the time for his cost. So I probably wouldn't play him. Mirage, a 3 cost ally, to thwart 1 attack after Mirage enters play. Choose an enemy whose scheme is less than Mirage's thwart. Stun that enemy. Okay, so for a lot of bosses, you, well, not a lot of bosses, because it's not less than or equal to, it's less than. There's a couple of bosses that you could stun with this, but not a lot and not really any very difficult bosses. And without that stun, this ally doesn't do much. So I, I don't think I would run this. Except maybe against like Rhino if I was playing Heroic 3 Rhino or something. In that case, she's she's good. She's decent if you can get the stun off on a boss. Otherwise, uh, she's not very good. Gentle, 3 cost, ally 1 thwart, 3 attack. Gentle takes plus 1 consequential damage after he attacks the villain, so you want him to attack minions. And if he does, he's fine. He's uh, roughly equivalent to the average hero specific ally. Nothing exceptional, but he's fine. So I would run him in a leadership deck. He has the X-Men trait, but doesn't require X-Men on the table. Uh, Pixie, 2 cost ally, 1 thwart to attack with 2 consequential damage. After you play Pixie from your hand, add an X-Men ally from your discard pile to your hand. So you could essentially say that she costs only 1 because she generates a resource for you. She's good. I like her. She's nothing exceptional. So for one cost, basically, you get one thwart and then a chump block. Which is essentially what you get from Stinger, right? And Stinger is okay, but nothing exceptional. Which is what I would say about Pixie as well. If you weren't... Running X-Men allies, though, she's pretty bad. Uncanny X-Men. Three cost support. Play under any player's control. Max one team card per player. Each of your X-Men allies gets plus one hit point. If each of your characters has the X-Men trait, each of your X-Men allies costs one fewer resource to play. Oh, okay. Now we're talking... So this whole cycle, we've been kind of waiting for a card that would come along and elevate the X-Men synergy because it was looking kind of weak compared to the Web Warriors. This is that card. This elevates the entire synergy quite a bit. This is really good. This is an auto-include in any X-Men deck. And this makes leadership the premier, the premier aspect for X-Men heroes for solo play. Probably a must include in a multiplayer game as well if anybody's playing an X-Men. Yeah, this is really really good. Not difficult at all to get good value out of this. This is an auto include, must include. Even if Storm's not that good in solo, it's probably worth buying this hero pack just for this card. That's how good it is if you intend to play any X-Men heroes at all. This is really, really strong. Leadership skill, one cost upgrade. Uses three leadership counters. When an ally makes a basic thwart or basic attack, remove one leadership counter from here. That ally gets plus one thwart and plus one attack for that action. Um, it's not that good unless you could take advantage of both in the same round. So you need an ability to ready your allies as well. And those cards tend to be pretty inefficient. So 
you can make this work, but it requires, I think, running inefficient cards in order to do so. So I would say this is a fun or thematic card, but not a very good one. To me, my X-Men. One cost event. Play only if your identity has the X-Men trait. Search the top five cards of your deck for an X-Men ally and put it into play. If that ally is still in play at the end of the phase, add it to your hand. That is really good. So you get to proc the interplay ability of an X-Men ally and then draw it, essentially. Which of the X-Men have traits or have abilities that you'd want to do that with? Let's take a look. Um, magic, after you play magic from your hand. No, that doesn't. After you play Sunfire from your hand. There's actually surprisingly few X-Men that have a in-play ability. I know Beast does. After Blindfold enters play, that's okay. Um, Lockheed if you're running Shadow Cat. But if you're running Shadow Cat, you're running Protection. Phoenix, if you're running Cyclops, after Phoenix enters play, choose a Cyclops card in your discard pile and add it to your hand. It's good with her. don't see a lot of others. Professor X it's good with. It's very good with Professor X. Very, very good. I was kind of souring on Professor X, but this card makes him a lot better. Beast is really good with this. Uh, that's probably about it. Yeah, so Beast, definitely. Professor X, definitely. Those are the two biggest ones, I would say, that this is really good with. It's never terrible, unless you search the top five cards of your deck and don't find an X-Men ally. Then it's not very good. But as long as you find an X-Men ally of any kind, even if it doesn't do anything, except attack. This is still really good. This is just an all-round exceptional card. Really, really strong. And combined with Uncanny X-Men, this really, really elevates the synergy. This, this makes all of this hero pack makes all of the X-Men heroes better, which seems to be the focus of Storm. So, uh, to me, if you're, if you're serious about playing uh, an X-Men deck, with one of the X-Men heroes, and Wolverine is really strong. And so, are, so is Shadowcat. It's got to be leadership, and it's got to include Uncanny X-Men, and to me, my X-Men. These are really, really good cards. To me, my X-Men is good with any X-Men ally. It's really, really good with any X-Men ally, really. And with Professor X and Beast, it becomes incredible. Like, among the strongest cards in the game. Because consider, for one cost, you get, you bring Beast in. Beast gives you a resource cost, so now not only are you at zero cost for the card, you're at negative one. He's act, it's actually generated you a resource. Then you get an attack or a thwart for two from Beast. And then, at the end of the phase, you get to add Beast to your hand. Do you do that before or after drawing your hand? You would do it after because 
drawing your hand comes before that, so then you get an additional resource for the next round. You could potentially generate three resources, like or an extra two resources and pay for the card. Yeah, this is an uh, incredible card. Really, really good. With any X-Men, but especially with Professor X or Beast. Effective leadership we've seen before. Forge, okay, we're into the basic cards. After Forge enters play, search your deck and discard pile for an X-Men or X-Force support and add it to your hand. X-Force is coming in the next cycle. Uh, as long as you're playing an X-Men support. Is Uncanny X-Men an X-Men support? Most of them haven't been that good. Uncanny X-Men is good though. Gives you an additional chance to draw it. I guess you'd need one more to play with this. If you have a card, an X-Men support that you can draw, this is really good. Without it, it's pretty meh. But uh, this, to me, is an auto-include in every X-Men deck. This card's good. It's a cycle card, similar to like Kalu or Maria Hill. The X-Jet, speaking of X-Men supports, 3 cost support, exhaust the X-Jet, generate a wild resource for a player whose identity has the X-Men trait. Uh, this costs too much for solo play, and it costs a lot I think because of its utility. You can generate a resource for any other another player that has no utility to a solo player. So I don't think I would run this in solo. With Forge, I'm not actually sure there is another good X-Men support besides Uncanny X-Men. We'll have to take a look. The X-Men supports are Cerebro, no. Danger Room, no. X-Jet, no. Utopia. Uh, Utopia. If each of your allies has the X-Men trait, increase your ally limit by one. After an X-Men ally enters play, exhaust Utopia, ready an X-Men character. Yeah, you could do that. You could run an X-Men ally deck with Uncanny X-Men, to me my X-Men, and Utopia. And that would give you another card to draw with Forge. I like it. And Utopia is unique, so you can't run more than one, and Forge gives you another way to draw it. Expansion, no. But yeah, Utopia makes the most sense. So Forge with Uncanny X-Men and Utopia, yeah, definitely. And there is another copy of Utopia. We saw it in Cyclops as well. X-Mansion, we've seen before. Endurance, play under any player's control, you get plus three hit points. Uh, cost too much for what it does. It's probably intended for Wolverine to give him a way to take advantage of his high recovery. I don't think I would run it though in Wolverine because it's not very good. If it had four hit points, I would, but not for three. And are there any other aspect cards? There are Hangar Bay, one cost support after an ally defends against an attack and is not defeated, exhaust this card and ready that ally. This is pretty bad. That almost never happens that an ally defends against an attack and is not defeated. And second, readying an ally isn't that good of an ability because it just means the ally dies faster. Yeah, you get more burst damage, but they also just die faster, so this uh, this card is really bad. I, I can't imagine running this except for like uh, weird fun combos or something like that. And then there's a bonus modular set. Uh, well, if it wasn't for Uncanny X-Men and to me my X-Men, I don't think Storm would be very good for solo play. Multiplayer, she's going to be fun and have a lot of utility and can elevate a team comp, though I don't know that you would play her over just another S tier hero unless you were all dedicated to playing X-Men for fun thematic reasons. 
So I can couldn't recommend Storm for multiplayer, at least not at first glance, for her power because like if you were gonna run a multiplayer team and you had your you got players, let's say you're trying to play the hardest scenarios in the game. I'm always reviewing cards as if that's the case, because I don't want players following my recommendations and then being disappointed at the power level of the heroes. If you choose to buy a hero, you should know exactly what you're getting from that hero. Let's say you're in a four-player game and you've got players, so you're tackling all the strongest quests in the game. You're trying to beat like the Galaxy's Most Wanted quest on Expert as a group, and you've got one player on Spider-Ham, you've got one player on Wolverine, and then you've got one player on Ghost Spider, and you've got one player on like Doctor Strange or something like that, or Ironheart. Could I recommend that you throw Storm into that group in place of any of those heroes? No. No, no, no. Now, if you're running four players and you all wanted to play X-Men decks, okay. Now we're talking about a situation where I could recommend Storm, but that would be like a, a fun or a thematic team comp, right? Not like a, we're serious about, you know, Heroic 1, Heroic 2 quests, or um, Expert Ronin, or, you know, Expert Ronin with the optional side quest or whatever. So that's the situation for Storm, but because Wolverine is really strong and Shadowcat are really strong and we have Uncanny X-Men and to me my X-Men, those two cards alone are powerful enough to recommend this hero pack for players who are serious about making the best possible X-Men deck that they can make for any of the heroes, but that's probably going to be most true for Wolverine or, well, for Wolverine, not Shadowcat, because Shadowcat likes protection. So for Wolverine, for Wolverine players, I could recommend to me my X-Men and Uncanny X-Men to elevate the leadership Wolverine deck, which is already really good. Nonetheless, we will play test, we'll play test Storm, and then I'll also test out Wolverine with the new cards and see how it goes. Forge is also really good as well. Yeah, so... The hero seems fun, but not that strong, but the uncanny X-Men, and to me, my X-Men do seem very strong. So, thank you for watching.